Warning, do not attempt to install this window before completely reading and understanding all instructions and considerations for fitment. This is especially important for van installs. These documents can be found inside of your package and on our website. Almost all issues of damage, leaking, and improper function are due to improper installation. A great deal of time has gone into creating this document to ensure your installation will be easy and successful. Issues due to improper installation are not covered under the product warranty. Hi, this is Ethan Higgins with Turnoverland, and today we're going to go over how to install one of our Arctic Turn windows. Before you begin this installation, however, make sure you read the current installation guide and considerations for fitment that are included in your package and can also be found on our website. That being said, let's get started. The materials that you'll need to install one of our windows I have laid out here on the table in front of me. So you're going to need your window and the correct size inner frame ring. And then to cut the hole in your vehicle or in your camper or whatever you're installing your window into, you're going to need um, a saw that's appropriate for the material that you're cutting. We'll be cutting through a composite, so I'm going to use this jigsaw here with the proper blade. And to get that started, I'm going to use a drill with a, with a drill bit that's the right size for the blade to fit through. Other useful items for cutting out the hole are masking tape. You're going to need some sort of poster board or cardboard. Um, we find that poster board works a little bit better than cardboard. And a knife with a sharp blade to cut that out. You're going to need a Sharpie with a, a fine tip on it. And then for actually installing the window, uh, you're going to need to install a frame depending on what kind of material you're installing the window into. Um, in our case, I'm going to use three quarter inch aluminum and some double-sided tape to install that to the, the body of the camper. If you're using, uh, like a if your wall is a thin sheet metal, like the side of a van, you're going to want to use hardwood, not plywood, or um, a similar metal like this to install the frame ring on the side of the van. And then finally, to install the window, you're going to need just a Phillips head hand screwdriver. You're not going to use a power drill for this, just a hand screwdriver. You're going to need some anti-seize for the screws. Um, a tape measure is helpful, and some calipers for measuring the gasket compression, although not necessary, are helpful when you're installing the window. And then finally, safety first. So I have my ear protection, my eye protection, and some nitrile gloves to use when I'm cutting out the hole in the side of the camper. And that's it. Let's get started. All right, here's my Turnoverland window that just came in the mail. I'm going to open this up and show you what it looks like being shipped from Turnoverland. So the first thing that you're going to notice on the top flap, there's this nice bright orange sticker. You want to inspect any product that you've received within 14 days. And if it's damaged, notify the seller of that damage. So I've opened my box and uh, right on top here, we have a nice little packet of information. So this comes with every window. Um, you've got a postcard from Turnoverland. You have your installation guide, uh, which you can also find online, as well as the considerations for fitment. So these are especially important to read before they install their window or begin with the process. And this is critical if you're installing in a van to read the considerations for fitment because there are some, some critical fitments that you need to get right before you install your window. So right on top here is the blind and screen assembly. Um, got the blind on one side and the screen on the other. This isn't secured to the window, it's just resting on top, so you can take that and set it aside. And then installed on the window with screws is the inner frame ring. So I'm gonna to have to back out all of these screws before I can use the inner frame ring to make my template for the whole cutout. So now the inner frame ring is free from the window and I can use that to make my template. But before I do that, I want to bring your attention to the screws that I just pulled out of the window here. These are the longer screws that were installed from Turnoverland and in the bag of hardware that's included with your window, you'll see that there's shorter screws as well. 
So you're gonna wanna read the installation guide and based on your wall thickness, you'll either use the 14 millimeter shorter screw or the 20 millimeter longer screw. It's very important that you use the correct size screw. Um, using the wrong size screw can lead to improper installation, it can damage the window, and can most likely cause leaking on the window. So this is very important. Additionally, in the bag are these um, sheet metal screws, and those are used to install the blind and screen assembly to your frame that's around the window. And then also in the bag are a few extra of these short and the long screws in case you lose one during installation. So we're ready to trace the template for cutting out our window. I have the inner frame ring on my poster board and I have a sharp pencil. This is useful when, the, when you have a smaller inner frame ring like the 24 to 34 size because a Sharpie can't quite get around the lip to mark it accurately. For the larger frame rings, a Sharpie will work fine. I have some masking tape here. I've taped down the, the poster board so that it doesn't move while I'm tracing this. And I'm gonna tape the inner frame ring to the poster board as well to keep that from wandering because I want to get a really accurate hole here. Now there's a lot of edges on this frame ring and the one that you want to trace is underneath this outside edge here. So it uh, lines up with the window. Um, when you have it on the window, you can look at that. Uh, it might be a little dark here, but it's this, this last edge down here that's against the poster board on the outside. You do not want to trace the inside here. You do not want to flip it over and trace this outside edge because then your hole will be too large and the inside edge your hole will be too small. So you want to definitely make sure you get the right edge here. And with that I'm going to start tracing around. As best as you can here you want to make sure that the line that you're making is as close to that outside edge as possible and that it's not being offset by the thickness of your pencil. All right, there we go. Now you're gonna wanna take your razor knife with a sharp blade. I have a fresh blade in here. And you're gonna wanna cut to the inside of the line that you marked so that your cut hole is as close to the sides of the window as possible. And we have all the dimensions for the cut hole size for each window on our website. So if you're unsure if the line you made is the right size, you can always reference the dimensions that are on our website. Now we have our template cut out. So to make sure that I did that correctly, I'm gonna get the window and I'm going to test fit this hole I just cut out over the frame. And if it just slides on nicely, then we know that we're good to cut the hole out of the wall. So yeah, I'm fitting the, the hole that I just cut out over the window here. And it's just a nice, easy fit all the way around. So yeah, we're good, we're good to cut it out of the wall. One thing to note here on the top of the window, there is a little bit of a weld here. And so um, after you cut the hole and the, depending on what your wall is made out of, you may have to create a little bit of a notch around that weld so that the window slides in nicely and you're not forcing it into the hole. So now we're inside the camper and I have my form that I cut out up on the wall here. I have it nice and square and where I want it with relation to the door and this is the bulkhead for the bed. And so um, I suggest that you do the same laid out on the inside first. And if you don't have a way to cut it out easily on the inside, one way you can transfer it to the outside is drilling some pilot holes through and then moving your form to the outside where you can then trace and uh, cut from the outside. But a lot of times on the inside, especially in vans, there's structure that you wanna make sure that your window is centered in and not too close. Um, to get those dimensions on how close you can be, you can look at our considerations for fitment, which is online and was also shipped with your window. And I have this right where I want it and I have enough clearance on the top and the bottom and all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace out my template here. Again, I'm using poster board here. If you don't have access to poster board, you can use cardboard. 
that definitely works. I do not, however, recommend using the box that your window is shipped in. Just in case you need to ship it back, uh, it's gonna be more difficult if you've used that box to cut up for your template. All right, so I've made it all the way around except for where the tape is. So I'm just gonna place a couple more pieces of tape to hold my template in place. Now we have our cut hole transferred to the side of our vehicle. We've got our hole traced on the wall here and we're ready to cut it out. To start here, I'm just gonna put a hole in each corner uh, using a drill bit that will fit the jigsaw that I'm gonna come through with later. Uh, depending on what your wall is made out of, this method may work for you or you may need to use tools that work better for your, the composition of your wall. So let's get started. Air protection for using the saw. Once you've done a long stretch like that, some masking tape can be helpful because as we come around, the panel itself is going to fall out, and so this masking tape will help hold that in place. And that's that. Now we have our hole to install our window into. We have our hole cut out and now I've put my framing up. I'm using three quarter inch aluminum tubing with VHB tape on the back. Uh, if, you're, if you're using a wood, then you're gonna wanna use a hardwood like birch or poplar. You do not wanna use plywood because it's too flexible and your window will end up leaking down the road. So something strong like a metal like aluminum or a hardwood like birch or poplar. So I frame my window out. One thing to note when you're using tubing like I am, you want to have the longer sections on the vertical. So you don't want to have a longer section on the horizontal because you're blind and screen, the screws are going to end up going right here. And if you have that horizontal on the horizontal being longer, your screw is going to go right into that crack and you don't want that. So make sure it's longer on the vertical. You don't have to have rounded corners or anything because the blind and screen will cover it all. I have it extending off the top here because of stuff that we're gonna install after the window. Um, so you can just have it squared off right at the top just to frame your window nicely. And when you install this, you wanna be really careful not to install it past the edge of the hole that you just cut because then your inner framing isn't gonna fit correctly. Now we're using VHB tape. So uh, any adhesive you use, you always wanna install it per the manufacturer's instructions. So I'm gonna pull one of these off, put a little bit of primer down and then stick it if you're using adhesive, like the Bostic adhesive that we sell, uh, you're gonna wanna let the, the frame that you've installed fully cure before proceeding to the window installation. With the VHB tape, I just have to apply some pressure and then I'll be ready to install the window. So let's begin. Now, if you are installing the frame for the window, onto the side of a curved van wall, for instance. You're gonna to wanna to use clamps so that your frame, whether it's metal or hardwood, uh, takes the curve out of the curved van wall. Uh, you wanna make sure that you let that adhesive fully cure so that when you install the window, it's not the screws that are pulling the curve out of the wall, it's the frame that is, is holding that wall rigid. So that's very important. All right, now we're ready to install the window. So we've got our frame on, we have the window in place with my handy assistant outside. You can see the hands through the window. We recommend having two people during this part of the process um, because simply putting masking tape over the outside of the window 
the force of screwing the screws into the nut certs can uh, push your window out and you don't want that to happen. So find a friend and have them hold the window outside for you while you complete the installation. For this part of the installation, you're going to need a screwdriver, you're going to need a metal-based anti-seize lubricant, not a Teflon-based one. So we have Permatex aluminum anti-seize and you're gonna put a little bit on each screw before you put it in. Um, it's really important here, we just set the window in the hole. We did not put any adhesive around the gasket or anything like that. Just the screws and the, the weather gasket around the outside of the window make this window 100% waterproof. So do not use adhesive when installing the window. So we've got our inner frame ring here and I'm gonna put some, a little bit of anti-seize on the first screw. So this stuff is messy, so you only need a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm just rubbing it along the end of the screw there. And you always want to use a hand screwdriver when you're installing these because it's, it's really easy to over tighten using a drill or any electric tool like that. Um, we're just going for 50 to 75% compression of the gasket. You're not going until the, the screw you know, gets torqued down. So if you need to, you can use some calipers to measure the gasket as it sits against the wall without any compression and then tighten down until you get that 50 to 75%. So I'm gonna get the first screw in here to hold the frame ring in place. All right. And remember here, you have the choice between the long screws and the short screws. My wall thickness ended up being 32 millimeters. And based on the chart that's included in the instructions in the box, 32 millimeters, I have the 24 to 34 millimeter inner frame ring. So I'm gonna use the longer screws for this installation. And when you install the screws, you wanna go kind of in a, a crosshatch pattern. So you tighten down the inner frame ring evenly and you get even compression on that gasket all the way around the outside of the window. So I've got all my screws just barely snugged in there and now I'm going to go around and tighten them the rest of the way to compress that gasket. Again going in the crosshatch pattern. Now I didn't mention it before but you do want to install the inner frame ring with these metal clips at the top because that is what the blind and screen is going to hang off of which we're going to install next year. Now we're ready for the final step to make this house at home. We're ready to install the blind and screen assembly. So as you'll notice, there's a blind and there's a screen. And you can install this in either orientation. So since this is going to be over a dinette area, we're going to install the blind on the top and the screen on the bottom so that you can keep the sun out of your eyes as you're eating breakfast. So to hang the blind, there's a channel on the back here. This little piece of... Uh, raised metal here, and you're gonna slot that over the two hooks on the inner frame ring. And that will hold it in place. So there is a little bit of that foam on the back, and you just have to compress that foam. You can stick your head in the window to make sure that you latched it. Now that holds it in place. With it hung like that, you can line it up left to right, depending on how big your, your frame is around the window. So I just want to get this nice and centered on my frame. And we're going to be putting four screws in, two in the top and two in the bottom. I like to do the top ones first. And so to hold the bottom in place while I'm putting the top in, I just have these two clamps here. So I just gently clamp the bottom to keep it from moving. Um, don't need anything too crazy. like that. Okay, one final check before we start drilling. So since I am going into aluminum, I'm going to need a pilot hole for these screws. 
to access where you're going to drill the holes, you just take your hands from underneath and you're going to pry kind of out and up and it just pops out like that. And so you can see there's a hole here and a hole on this side in the same location where we're going to be drilling our pilot holes. So I have the, the proper size drill bit for my screw and the material that I'm going into. And I want to be careful here when it punches through, depending on how thick your, your material is, not to have the drill impact the plastic here on the side of the blind and screen. one and again we're not using a drill here to tighten the screw in we're just using a, a hand screwdriver to get it nice and snug just hand tight on these okay let's do the other side It's a good idea to drill one and then put the screw in one at a time just so that if you drill all four at once and your assembly wanders a little bit, you might have trouble lining these screws up. To close the top, you just push down on it and you listen for two clicks. So it kind of slots in there, but that's still loose. You want to push it in all the way like that. And now that's closed. So with that held in place, we can do the bottom. You want to make sure you remove any of that metal so it doesn't get wound up in the screen there. And just hand snug on these. You don't need to tighten it down. All right, and that is an installed Arctic Turn window and blind and screen assembly. The operation is really simple. You can just move the blind or screen up and down. You can clip them in the middle and they can move together to operate the window. If it's in its fully closed position, there's these little gray buttons. You have to press the gray button before you move the handle. And then this is an awning style window, so there's a few clicks you can open it to. Push it past the click and let it go, and it'll stay open. There's number two number three, and then you can close it all the way and lock it up. And that is how you install an Arctic Turn window.